and we are live. Oops, nope. Sorry, I'm hitting all kinds of wrong channels. And we are live from Winston Salem, Dirty South, and uh, don't adjust your screens. Yes, I have Mr. Wesker Griff with me tonight. Uh, Mike might come on, probably not. Uh, and I always send out the the uh, for our group or our house group or whatever. So how you doing tonight, Ed? Hello, I'm Ed. doing well. Thanks for having me on, Scott. It's it's been quite a while. It's been a little bit. <laughs> So yeah, I'm yeah. Easter, uh, I finally had off. So, was your place of appointment closed today, or they just nice? No, I just, busy? yeah, I just had off today. Thank you. What's up, Hodges? Um, are you watching the Dodgers game by any chance right now? I don't have my TV on at the moment. Okay, well, thank you for giving me uh, most of your undivided attention. Uh, I was just wondering because the Dodgers base is loaded down four to one. Uh, so your Mets, I mean, your Mets, my Mets, your Phillies, your Phillies finally got a win today. How do you feel a little bit better about them? Or are you hallelujah? <laughs> the Phillies have risen on Easter <laughs> Sunday. Hallelujah. My Mets have not, they lost three to the Brewers. So I don't know if the Brewers are just that good or the Mets are. I think the Mets are just that bad. Uh, they're trying to say it all off season. Um, I think they're waiting for to go after Soto next year. Right? I have that feeling. Um, speaking of Soto, you've been excited in our group chat about him so far this year. I know they're playing your your hated Astros, but how how do you like Soto so far? Nobody had a better week in baseball than Juan Soto, I'll tell you that. What an immediate impact that he has had for the Yankees. Because the Yankees have not been able to beat the Astros. The Astros have absolutely dominated the Yankees. But you get Juan Soto, who's the boogeyman for the Astros, you get him on that Yankees team, and what happens? Immediate cultural change. Four yeah. wins. They said, I, I, I would be curious. I have to check it out. When was the last time the Yankees had a four-game sweep against the Astros? I, but you know what I do. What what I think Soto also brings is a looseness to that team. The Yankees always seem to be an uptight business type of organization. Um, Soto might loosen that up a little bit, and they go back to having some fun. Um, My know, two biggest, older. another big takeaway I I had from watching some of those games is. Hopefully Aaron Judge starts starts to get going a little bit because he had multiple opportunities with runners in scoring position and runners on base, and he had a rough weekend. He had a lot of opportunities. to. Get, he, if he would have just got a couple hits here and there with runners on, he'd probably have about like six, seven RBIs right now already to start the season. He had a lot of opportunities. So let me ask you this, Ed. Uh, are you watching I, – I, Everybody knows you're a Soto lover, uh, and I don't mean that in the I mean that in a uh, uh, platonic manly way. Uh, <laughs> but maybe I don't know. I I don't dive too deep when it scares me. But anyway, uh, are you watching Yankees games this week because they're playing the Astros, or are you going to find yourself playing watching more and more Yankees games because of Soto? I'll probably check. Well, I have Soto also on my fantasy squads. So I like to check in from time to time specifically to see Soto play. I'm not going to mm -hmm. sit down and watch a full Yankees game. I right. did do that this weekend because, you know, the Phillies game got pushed back. So the one day was free. I was able to watch the Yankees. Um, then I was just the other, the other Phillies game was on earlier and the Yankees were on later. So the seven o'clock, time schedule was open to where I could watch that whole game. But yeah, I'm watching the Yankees mostly because Soto's on them is on the team. Normally I wouldn't pick normally I wouldn't randomly just put the Yankees game on. Yeah. I, I did not watch any of it. I, I, I do not hide that I'm a Yankee hater. 
it's hard for me to watch the Yankees as much as I love watching Soto. Um, you know, I'll, I'll watch the cross town games um, if I get a chance <laughs> uh, to watch them. But uh, yeah, I really wanted to watch some of the Orioles this weekend, and I really I wanted to watch the Phillies Braves. I, I can't because they're blacked out to me. The uh, Braves games are. Um, so I didn't get to watch any of that, but I, I heard the Braves look like the Braves and uh, the Phillies bullpen look like the Phillies bullpens of the past. The first that- two Phillies games were absolutely abysmal, although Zach Wheeler dominated. Zach Wheeler was very, very good. He held the Braves in check, and the moment that he got taken out of the game, he did get taken out early. He was only on 80 pitches. I understand right. that it's early in the season, so you don't want to – have his workload be too big, but Rob took him out. The moment he took him out, it was just a disaster. The bullpen just absolutely imploded. Connor Brogd came in again and just gave up a ton of runs. And uh, the Phillies got their ass kicked in the Friday and the Saturday game. Aaron Nola did not have it at all. He he looked he gave up the most career hits he's given up. Gave up like twelve hits. Uh, just really, really rough. Thankfully, they were able, like I said, hallelujah, the Phillies have risen. Thankfully, they right. were able to salvage today. And there was a couple really bad calls that benefited the Phillies in the Friday and Saturday game, too. There was a pitch right down the middle that they called a ball. You're going to hear and about the, that on the popping sky. Yeah, it, it was really egre- – it was egregiously <laughs> bad. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, the Phillies – I think Castellanos was up, and he he got That's a walk out of that. Max Freed, it was when Max Freed was pitching. Right. And they – if the Phillies would have won that game, that definitely would have been a lot bigger story. But they – Aaron Nola just imploded. He could not – it was – Oh, I I've know. I've never seen him that bad team. before. Yeah. So – Like, they were just know. teeing off on him. Yeah, so Binks asked you if Soto market has has you know gone up, down. What's up, Gary? As well for this evening. I haven't really checked. I haven't been checking. I mean, I once I buy a Soto card, I really unless I want like multiples of it, I don't really check what it's what it's selling for. Right. So I have been. I haven't really been buying too many cards recently since the Philly show. I think I've only picked up one card recently, and it was a non-sports. It was a vintage non-sports card, so I haven't really been picking up much. And normally around the first couple of weeks of, of opening of opening day and opening week, I tend not to go too crazy picking up baseball uh, because I find that the prices are high. I'm assuming with the weekend that Soto had – his cards are – there's probably a lot more people looking at his cards, especially Yankees fans. And I'm assuming all the Soto speculators are going to come out of the woodwork now. <laughs> and he might really start taking off. But Right. They, yeah, him and a Yankee and, and playing well, I, 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 those cards are going to – and it's going to be weird because it's going to be his Yankees cards that people are going to want. And I don't know about his his rookie card to probably go up too, but uh, well, yeah. right now the one of his card I was talking to Mike Fabian, Eastern Connecticut Sports Cards, about this. You're in the chat, so you're aware of the mm-hmm. card I'm going to mention. Soto's super short print from 2024 flagship, the Yankees. His technically, I guess, his first Yankees card. I guess you could say it is. Right. Tops really screwed the pooch on that. Uh, they made that a super. Short print, and obviously it's a photoshopped card, but it still looks pretty good. But what they they were selling for like 500 600 bucks. I mean, I'll check it right now to see what it's selling for. It's probably more, yeah. Than it, that. It's a, yeah, I know it's a crazy price, and also the uh, you know, I think they have him in big league though in a Yankee uniform, if I remember correctly. This fuel this goes into what I was saying though when the news initially broke though that Juan Soto was getting traded to the Yankees. 
I said he's going to do great in New York, but as a Soto collector, it's probably not the best news because the you're paying for the Yankee premium and Yankee collectors, mm -hmm. Yankee fans who are also baseball card collectors, a lot of them have really stupid money and they really throw that stupid money around. So cards get in, incredibly expensive. Right, right. Yeah, that that's a as a Mets fan, it's not as crazy as the Yankees, but it's still, you know, as a Pete Alonso collector, I have to deal with similar situation. Um, even though, you know, I just, I learned from Ed and just be patient and, and don't have FOMO. And, you know, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. I, I got, I, uh, I'll give a preview. So I picked up, have you, I've been loving these true photo variants this year. So this is the one with him on door. So I picked this up at a reasonable price. And then I picked up the true photo of a leader's card for pennies on the dollar to the rest of them. So I found that the cards are already for series one and starting to come down uh, to reasonable prices, not the crazy first week. The big league, because P. Alonzo is a super rare or whatever they're calling it. Um, the first week his card was like $25 and I was like, no way I'm not paying $25 for a big league base card. Now it's down to 10. So just be patient out there. Uh, but good luck if you're a Soto collector looking for Yankee stuff, it's going to be a tough road. I think <laughs> I found one, one just got listed for six ninety five or best offer but i'm trying to find a sold listing uh, this might take a little bit. and you know what that's probably that part person will probably sell it for around that i don't know if you'll get 695 but <laughs> and as a seller just be patient you know you just have to show patience he is he keeps... in big league though i'm seeing a lot of big league cards here But, you know, Tops knows what they're doing. They put that in as a chase in Series 1. I don't know if we really needed a chase in that because they do have some great – I think this year Tops with the true photo. I don't know if you need a true photo and golden mirror as variants. Uh, but, you know, the they, they got some cool cards. I've been having fun chasing them. Um, and then the, then they come out with big league and he's in his New York uniform. I, I, I kind of, you know, if you want one of his in his New York uniform, you can get one there. Uh, Hey, what's up four leaf. I am having a great night. I hope you are too. We're just getting all, oh, I got it. I got a YouTube Hall of Famer here with me. YouTube Hall of Famer is tuning in. Great night. Great night. So you said right now you're not buying much because you feel like the beginning of the season is just a natural price hike in cards. That's typically and, how, I mean, that's typically how it goes, I feel like. Makes sense. I, I Man, just I'm like on the sixth page here, and I still have not found a sold, a sold copy. Really? Yet. Yeah. Oh wait, hmm. here we go. I finally found one. Sold on March nineteenth. Seven hundred fifty dollars. Uh, a best offer was accepted. So, I yeah, don't know the exact price. Terra Peak to see that. Um, but I'll go yeah. go to. Price and shipping highest first. One sold for nine hundred on March fifth. That's crazy. Jeez. Uh, one sold uh, at auction for seven twenty five on March second. That's just nuts to me. I like that card. I think it's a really cool card. Thanks, but Mike. That's that's ridiculous. <laughs> I asked Duke, 
I wouldn't have a problem with Stu being in there. Uh, so this first weekend of baseball, uh, other than Soto, have you seen any? Well, let's talk about one thing. Montgomery getting signed to the Diamondbacks. Does that move the needle for Montgomery collectors out there? I don't know if he's a high collected player or what. Uh, but how, what did you think about the signing? Any thoughts in the collectability of him? Or yeah, Scott Boris royally screwed up. I think his qualifying <laughs> offer from the Rangers was higher than that. Well, when, he he uh, cost Matt Chapman money with yeah. the Blue Jays. So he royally screwed up and miscalculated the market. Uh, the Diamondbacks got a great deal. So we'll see if that pushes them to be a, a wild card team again. I still don't think that that'll push them to win the division because the Dodgers are just insanely loaded. Uh, they're hurting in the pitching department, though. I, um, I, I just hope your boy stays loose because somebody's going to get him for pennies on the dollar just so he can prove himself. You talk about Bauer? Yeah. I feel like it already would have happened, though. I don't know. I think somebody's going to have to be on a desperate stage. Now you want Boris is talking about collusion. You want to talk about collusion? I think Bauer has a has a, a fight with with that. We've seen that happen before in baseball, though. It's like people have amnesia. Like when Barry Bonds left the Giants, he made it abundantly clear he wanted to be a DH in the American League. He, if you look at his last season with the Giants. He was still putting up elite numbers. Say what you will right. about Barry Bonds. He was still putting up elite production. Right. He he didn't retire. I, in fact, I think he retired maybe like in 2010, 2011. He begrudgingly had to retire because nobody would sign him. He was blacklisted. He was blackballed. Much like what happened with what is going on with Trevor Bauer. Yeah, uh, and Mike, what I was talking about, it's going to be like a team, and it might be later in the season or a, another major injury to a team where they're number one or number, you know, they're not deep and they need need somebody. I think Bauer should be on a team now. You'll hear more about that tomorrow's show. Uh, so, you know, I, I feel I feel the same way as you. I even, I think I even bring up Bonds in that show as well because – it, he, he didn't play in a hitter-friendly park, still did what he did. Um, you know, steroids or not, he, the, what he did was crazy. And, you know, at the time, they were looking the other way anyway. They, did, they were they reluctantly made rules against it <laughs> So because it just got in the media so much. And then the commissioner gets into the Hall of Fame and the players that brought baseball – back to the main world or not. So that's the part that, that gets me kind of chapped. Uh, yeah, well, Mike, uh, my friend Carlos makes that point with many players in Trout. Uh, MLB and the commercialism of Trout has really put the, his name. He's probably won a couple of MVPs. He might not have should have won. Uh you know, but I mean, Trout's a great player as well. Yeah, well, Mark, I, I, Mark, I, I, I agree with anybody yeah, that has yeah. that decision making, but the commissioner of baseball looked the other way during that. He wasn't the only one. None of those guys got in trouble. They brought baseball back after that last, uh, after that uh, holdout or whatever stoppage in play. Baseball was dying a quick death. And him, McGuire, Sosa, Clements, all these guys are bigger than life. Ball players brought it back, and, and the commissioner didn't say anything. So. I don't even like Barry Bonds. I mean, I've been on record saying that multiple times. I'm sorry, right. Nate. Sorry to my boy, Nate. I I'm not a like, Bonds fan either. I so. don't like the man at all, but – and I don't like what he did, but the fact remains he was blackballed out of the sport 
because right. he was given elite production in 2007 and he wanted to be a DH in the American League. There was multiple teams that needed a DH in 2008 that were in the American League. He could have went to a lot of different teams and he just got blackballed. Ooh, Trout and Frank Thomas numbers are similar. I would kind of probably disagree. Here's a funny thing. Put up Frank Thomas and Mickey Mantle numbers side by side. We had a fun look at that on this channel one night, Mark. And you'll be surprised because people do not. There's people out there that think Frank. I don't know if you're one. And I don't know. I hope you're talking about the big hurt, not Frank Thomas that played for the Senators. Uh, there you go for my dead guy. Know who dead guys are. Um so that that's a fun look at it, it really is uh my man mike o brought that to my attention we were having that discussion but there's people that frank thomas thinks frank thomas was an okay player that made the hall of fame uh what i didn't like about the steroid users was how it affected king griffey jr's great career they made griffey look like the next level below and stook if you remember he ran into the fence and after he ran into the fence, he wasn't the same player after that because that's who Griffey was. Uh, Harper kind of did the same thing, ran into the fence one year. He kind of – his legs and stuff, and now they got him at first. But uh, Harper is on a different level when it comes to hitting. And I hope he's okay. I, I, I You know, he didn't play today. Um, have you heard anything about that in, in Philly there, Ed, about Harper? Rob Thompson said it was a scheduled day off, which I find very hard to believe since we're into the third game of the season and since the Phillies already had off on Thursday since it was rained out. So I don't know if he's just bullshit into the media or if it was supposed to be a scheduled day off. Either way, why are you giving your star player – a day off on the third day of the season. It doesn't make any right. sense. So when he could I hope, or whatever. I hope there's nothing wrong with him because he took a real nasty tumble into yeah, the camera heard. well. And that's all metal right there. It's not yeah it's not I, concrete. I, I, it's actual metal. I do not hide the fact I'm not a Phillies fan, but I like watching the best ball players play. I don't care what uniform they're in. Uh, just like with the Yankees. I'm not a Yankee fan, but I still like Soto. I like to see Judge healthy. I like to see Stanton healthy, Rizzo. You know, you want to see the best players play. Uh, Colorado Sports, dude, nice to see you tonight, man. Yo, and how, hi, all. Did you see Bryce Harper fly over? <laughs> Don't know why I'm bringing that up, oh, but quickly seen that, and he seemed okay. Yeah, uh, I read about it. That's what we were just talking about, funny. Uh, I hate Bonds, but I was still applaud him when he, he – Mashed homers at Dodger Stadium when eight-year-olds booed him. I told the snot-nosed bastards was the best dinner they would ever go see. Probably. Because you got to remember, Bonds also led the league and broke records for walks. So he didn't see many balls in the strike zone to do what he did. Steroids doesn't help your hand and eye coordination. It does help your vision a little bit, but it doesn't make you see, uh, make you Superman. See. Oh, we we got, can't be uh, revision. We can't be revisionist though, because when Bonds was attempting to break Aaron's record, everywhere he went, he was booed. It didn't matter how old or young you were; he was a pariah. People yeah. despised him. The narrative and despised it wasn't, him, and it wasn't because just because of steroids. I didn't like him, not because of steroids. I didn't like him because it was a prima donna. The things you read about him and all that stuff. My best friend loved him, imitated him in the outfield. Too bad he couldn't imitate him at the plate. But, you know, I, it, it's just how it was. I always, I always, I always told, I always told Mike, go, there's two people who really love Barry Bonds, San Francisco Giants fans in the Bay Area and people who invested in his rookie cards. Here's Mark. Uh, Junior was the best player I've ever seen that, as far as I know, was not on the juice. And that's the set. During that era, you don't know who was. And that's – but you can't – we can only 
speculate the ones we don't know about and definitely point fingers at the ones we do know about, you know. So, uh, and, I, and I've always said baseball stories, baseball makes the great stories. That's why I kind of upset about replay uh, because that pitch you talked about in yesterday's game, people want to bring in the, the automatic umpire behind the plate then you're going to lose some of those great stories that baseball has. Now, maybe they're not the best stories because of the outcome, but they're still great stories. I mean, a, a no-hitter gets taken away because of a bloom call at first, things like that. Terrible, terrible outcome, but it's a story. Uh, Griffey was toe-to-toe with Sosa McGuire in 98 till the end of August. Griffey didn't have the extra recovery help. Yeah, I... I I, I like to think that Griffey did do it the right way. I hope the Easter Bunny came today and he didn't. I'm sorry, Mike. Uh, we got Ray from Philly. Hi, guys. Uh, I, I know he's happy they got a win today. I like Scott, K. Hey, Ray, hey, Stuke. I've always Baseball had that. Op- I've always had that opinion, and I'm not, I'm not changing it. I still think. And I've always believed that Griffey's the best player of the 90s. Yes. Yes. Uh, top to bottom. Because um, he, he also, this is also why, like, he, he he's more than a game, right? Griffey, they made games of him. He was on covers. He was everywhere. And, he, and it wasn't just about baseball. Everybody, there's, People that don't like baseball or don't care about baseball know who Ken Griffey Jr. is. Uh, you know, it's kind of like Tiger Woods or Michael Jordan in that aspect. Uh, you know, maybe not as famous, but people know who he is. And he and he transcended the sport is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, at baseball convention, we were talking about that even as a non-Yankee fan. And you know what? Having the Yankees having a good start and could they be in the hunt at the end of the year? It's good for baseball. It just is. I really like Harper. I do too. I was a huge Harper fan. Uh, Saw him in the minors, uh, you know, followed his early career before the pro uh, major leagues. Yeah, Mike, I have to agree with you. Some really big names in chat. Every time Bob swung, he swatted a homer. He was an unbelievable zone. Yeah. Yeah, Colorado. Bryce Harper coming up, and he wasn't supposed to come up at that time, but Nationals had injuries, so they didn't want to hold him back. So they brought him up. I'm shocked no one has asked you about the slide. I'm shocked. The McNeil Reese Hoskins? Or yes, sir. Chase. So we can get in that in a minute. Let me finish up here. Bonds hit a home run, walked too bad. He, he was, yeah. Yeah. And you know what? Razor Ramon, baby. Scott Hall. Everybody loves the bad guy. There's got to be a bad guy, right? <laughs> it has to be. And Bonds played it. Uh, he relished in that role. He enjoyed that role. Yes, he did. He loved it. He didn't mind wearing the black hat. I like Bonds before Valco even rooted for him to break Mark McGuire to break McGuire's record. You know, I mean, when he was a pirate, I had, I mean, those years with the Killer Bees and, and him and Vanilla and Van Andy Van Slyke in the outfield at Pittsburgh. That was one of the best outfields I ever saw, like at the plate. I don't know about it in the outfield itself, but at the plate, man, and that team was just so fun to watch. Uh, Bonds was 10 times the hobby than Griffey. Junior did it the right way. At least Griffey Jr. was good, even though he was at the forefront of plus five players being hurt all the time and sitting in sat a lot. Yeah, I, I'm going back to when he ran into that fence, Mike. Um, he started having issues then, and then he couldn't keep. He, if you watch him when he went to the Reds, he started having some weight issues. 
Um, he was hurt a lot when he was with the Reds. Yes, and then when he went to the White he had Sox, hamstring injuries, fucking right. I think I, he had a major elbow injury one year. Like, yeah, he, um, and, and let's talk about the Reese Hopkins meet me. I almost text you when that happened. So you have to remember there is bad blood between our Mets and Hoskins when Hoskins was with the Phillies. All right. That was not initiated by Reese Hoskins, though. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who initiates it. It's still bad blood. You know, I mean, yeah. Uh, the, the slide through the bag, I thought was a perfectly fine. McNeil had Thank plenty, you. Time, plenty time to get out the way. Me, Reese never slid outside of the baseline. He just slid through the bag. He slid hard through the bag. And sorry, McNeil, you would have got killed standing there like that just uh, five years ago. Then McNeil says to the media after the game, I wasn't trying to turn the double play. Then why were you trying to transfer the ball, numb nuts? Right. Seriously. Of course trying to turn. I, I didn't see that, Wesker Griff. I, I am starting to become less and less a McNeil fan as a Mets fan. I think he's a, a blowhard that had one good season and – trying to live up to that one good season. Um, he's not good at second base. Uh, damn. Anyway, uh, he uh, – so I thought it was a good play by Hoskins. What I didn't like by Hoskins is Manil comes up, throwing F-bombs in his face, giving it to him. Reese Hoskins ignores him, runs off the field, waits till he gets his boys behind him, and then tries to talk smack. That was kind of a uh, pussyfied. <laughs> I was like, are you now going to talk trash? <laughs> I'm like, and, and he kind of did the same thing in the next game when the guy threw behind him. The pitcher walked all the way to the plate to get the ball. That was definitely intentional. Oh, 100%. And Reese Hoskins waited till everybody got in between him before he was going to say anything. Well, homeboy don't want to fight on the third game of the season and get that. If big you're going to do suspension. it, do it now and get it. But I, I, I don't want him to fight. Just don't wait till all your guys are there to start. Then don't say anything. Be a bigger man and walk away. Don't try to be tough after the fact. That that I, I am perfectly fine with not fight. I don't want you to fight. I think McNeil lost his freaking mind and is totally wrong. I know that's hard for you to hear me say that, <laughs> but I think he was very wrong in that, that, uh, at that moment. And, uh, I hope he looks back on it later and he might not come out and ever say he was wrong, but I hope he'll look at it and go, I'm an idiot. You know, I think he needs to apologize to his team for getting them in that situation. John Boy um, did a great video on it already breaking. Oh, did he down. really? Yeah, he did. I'll send you the link. He oh, broke, yes. He, he broke it down, but he just kept going on and on and on on the field. McNeil, I'm talking about, just bitching and bitching and bitching. Then he's trying to tell the umpire that Reese Hoskins is one of the dirtiest players in the league. We got videotapes on him doing all this stuff. I'm like, dude, I watched Reese Hoskins his whole fucking career. He ain't dirty. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Hey, Mike, I, I hear you on the mantle thing. Different times, man. Different times. People played hurt at that time period. We know now players, they're a, uh, they're a company to themselves. When they're hurt, they're going to sit out. To, they don't want to lose seasons off of their career. They want to make more money. Back when mantle was playing, it was a different type of game. Uh, Colorado sport, dude, that was a lazy ass slide. If you're not allowed to do that in today's game, McNeil has a right to be mad. Should have nailed him in the first pitch instead of let him dominate the game. Then look stupid. Mark says it was a clean play. I, I didn't see any problem. I, I love the Mets. I hope everybody that watches it. That's my team. Uh, I have the baseball package to watch their games. I ain't. Pete Alonso is my favorite player playing right now. Uh, I, I used to like McNeil. I, I think – I don't know what his issue is with that. Um, I do have a problem, too, that the night before, 
Saturday night, they all went, some of them, not all, some of them went to a concert. Uh, they looked like they were having a very good time, if they were, you know. Uh, so. That's a slow Monday for the Mick, baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, you lost two games. You are hit. You can't hit. No, you got two guys on your whole team that are hitting, which is Pete Alonzo and, and Alvarez. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, Mark. I, that's right. I forgot that. That it, I, I knew that. I knew that. Um, so I, I felt I was totally different than the Chase Utley play years ago. I felt like this one was a lot cleaner. Um, was was clean. I just think McNeil just stood there. I don't know what he was doing. I don't think. I I think. Uh, the, the rule, that's one of those times when the rule puts a player's player's safety in danger because they think they're the protected. The play that I felt more upset about was in game one uh, when DJ Stewart got picked off at first and they're supposed to be calling blocking the bag. And they were calling it all spring training on stupid calls. And Reese Hoskins had his foot in the middle of the bag and about a foot in front of the bag. DJ about separated his shoulder, sliding back into the bag and knew where to go and got tagged out. Um, I I think that's a good play. I played first base. That's what I was taught to do. But they were calling that in the preseason in spring training. So are you not calling it? Or are you calling it? That, that's I hate when they do that. Um, those type of things. So, yeah, the inconsistency sometimes can be annoying. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, that that type of deal. So, I just want to know what the rules are. I'm not playing, but I'm watching, and uh, just like to know what the rules are. So, and another thing with. I'm just going to touch just for a second on Otani. I'm going to state it. I don't care. Okay. If he did wrong, punish him. If he lied about it, kick him out. I don't care. Because guess what? He'll be forgotten about. Is he one of the best players right now? He might be. It's hard to say a guy that doesn't play the field as a best player. But he's one of our better hitters. Uh, what's up, JD? Uh, I I just want it to be done and over with. I, I you know I hope they don't try to hide anything, but I just have a funny feeling MLB is going to try to. I that's all I want to say about it. Uh, but at the end of the day, I don't care because if he's gone, there'll be somebody else we're talking about. A month from now, there, there's other players in a Soto. Holy cow, Max Muncy just hit one to San Bernardino Highway. By the um, way, a couple of days ago on the Dodgers telecast, Pepino Man was clearly in view. Oh, great. When they were getting the tarp out, it was yesterday. Nice. I was like, oh man, there's Pepino. Uh, yeah, I have a picture of him in the dugout with somebody took a, or he was on national television with Clayton Kershaw. Uh, man, Max Muncy just it was only only 321 feet, but man, he crushed it. Uh, this is one of those games where I hate both teams and hope the field swallows up. Uh, <laughs> five, five before Dodgers, but I do like Will Smith, he did get an extension 10 years, I think. Um, uh, 140 also, million, yeah. So, uh, I, I'm a huge Will Smith believer. I was hoping he was gonna leave the Dodgers, but. Uh, he's not. I'm still a believer. But uh, anyway, also heard, I don't know if you heard this, that there's not going to be any more MLB on ESPN after next year. I didn't Did hear, hear about that. that. Uh, my dad said that they've opted. They, they got a uh, thing through 28, but they opted out after 25. I was like, wow, that's big. I don't remember MLB not being on a Sunday night on ESPN. <laughs> I don't like that news because if that's true, then they're probably going to try to push more games on Peacock and Apple TV, which well, I that's, despise. I, I know who, right. Like, 
are, is Peacock going to have the Sunday afternoon game or Saturday, one or the other? I forgot what they had last year. Well, they've been using three streaming services. They've been using Peacock. They've been using Apple, uh, Apple and then they use also YouTube TV from time to time. That's right. Which is free. Yeah, I had to watch the Mets game on YouTube last year because it wasn't on – it was like three weeks in a row. I had to watch it on somewhere I have on Apple TV, TV, uh, not TBS, Peacock, and then yeah. So I couldn't. I'm not getting Apple. I can get it for free. I just don't. I'm not going to get it for one one Friday night game a week. No, I'll just put on the radio. Listen to the games. Hashtag listen to the games. Yeah, I, I actually, if it's a good announcing crew, I, I really do like listening. Uh, but I grew up listening. My dad was a sports radio announcer, so all, we always listened to games. Games were always on in the car, you know, so kind of grew up that way. That's how my dad listened. That's how you, you, you know, he wanted to, they only had one game a week, maybe when he was a kid, so. To listen, he listened to games all the time, so kind of passed that down to me. Uh, so right now, you, you you're still with your soda. Are you are you picking up any any Phillies? Who non Phillies? Is there anybody else outside of Soto that is playing now that you are looking at at all? No, not really. I mainly just focus on the Phillies. If I could find some good deals on some Orioles, I'll pick them up if they're cheap. And then otherwise, I'm trying to pick up Hall of Famers or like rookie cards or stuff like that. But I try to keep it to the Phillies. Yes, uh, Mike Petty. He says Smith plays only 90 games. He's a bomb. Okay, but I, I like him. I like bombs, I guess. Uh, for MLB, yeah, I agree with that. MLB, because this year there's local stations. You're going to have to pay extra to watch games. And I think it's like because they can't afford. I think that's the route it's going to go. Like, I don't know what local station the Phillies on, but. We're on Comcast. Yeah. Comcast so Sports Night. I, I, they, it's going in that route because. Places cannot afford to to pay the ransom that MLB or the other sport. You have to pick which sport you're going to show. And for MLB, so your local broadcasting doesn't really do NFL. They might do a post game show or whatever in preseason games, but they do basketball. They'll probably have hockey, but baseball is probably their big one. But baseball is just so expensive for local rights. Um, that's all I, that's been a problem though. And we've been talking about this a lot, right? MLB has got to do a better job of making the game more accessible for people, especially to watch, especially in right. this day and age where people can just pull up a game on their phone. Right. Right. So they got to do I, a better job. It's frustrating. Yes. I I'm with you. I am blacked out for four different teams that make no sense to me. Um, none of them are less than five hours from me, um, and I can't watch their games. And when the Mets play, and they're all National League te- or no, three National League, one American. So when the Mets play them, I don't get to see those games unless it's a nationally televised game. So I listen to them um, on the radio, uh, or I do the play-by-play with the uh, the little caricature showing me where the pitches are and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I, I just think, I think it's being shown this year too, it, where people didn't overreach and pay these guys extra nominal amounts of money because they were the only free agents out there. There was teams that were willing to pay them a good amount, but they didn't want to go over the, the, the cap because they'll be in their third year or second year or even a first year. And these teams are starting to feel it. I mean, the Padres had to take out a loan last year. I I don't think. They were on the verge of bankruptcy at one point, weren't they? Yes. Well, that's That's one of the reasons why they had to get rid of Soto or somebody. Because they couldn't pay them. 
They they just didn't have the money. So if that's if that's the case, I mean, are we going to start seeing a decline in in you know? Because it looks like this year this year's baseball is more parity than I've seen in a long time. Uh, I guess the Dodgers have a very good lineup, but I still think they're having some holes in their pitching staff and age. I think the Yankees lineup is awesome, but again, with Garrett Cole going down, that's that's a big miss, and they got some question marks at starting, but they have an awesome bullpen, probably the best in baseball. Um, you know, the Orioles look very good, but that's a built team within. Uh, so I, I'm just sitting here going, you know, I think there's a lot of good parity. And that's the reason why you can see the Diamondbacks rise up and get into the World Series. And who knows who that team might be this year. A lot of people are thinking the Mariners or, you know, somebody else. Uh, I, I picked the Twins, uh, even though it feels like they're falling apart already this year. But, you know, who I, you picked uh, Phillies and Seattle. Seattle. So you were one of guys. I tried to go outside the box. I didn't want to pick the odds on favorites because I find that boring when people just pick the favorites all the time. Well, I picked the Phillies again. And the only reason is I think the Braves will win the division, but they're not built to win the playoffs. Yeah, that that's who I was talking about, Stu. I was watching a game. I like watching the Twins. They're a good young baseball team. Uh, I love the fandom there. You get kind of you watching a Twins game, you get caught up in the. To me, I get caught up in the excitement if it's a good game. The fans know when to cheer and all that. It's a, they remind me of St. Louis fans. Uh, but Royce Lewis running around second base, it starts limping. I'm just like this guy. They need to play. He needs to be the kid in the bubble playing out there. I mean, every year, every year, and and Correa takes a foul ball off the foot that he was hurt all last year with and was limping around. Like, well, here we go. The Royce Lewis thing doesn't make sense to me. Like, is is he like an actual human or is he made of glass? Because the dude is literally hurt like every time. Nobody gets that hurt. Right. It's yeah, like I you don't... literally have to wrap him in bubble wrap. That's what I think. Like, <laughs> and even then, and if you're watching him, I don't know what exactly happened to him, Stukes, if you know. It looked like he turned his ankle over, but. They, I, and then he didn't really fight coming out the game. Uh, he just stayed. He didn't fight. He came out and he said, all right, I'm coming out. So I don't know if he's one of these guys, if he can't play hurt or injured, whatever the term is, you know, he's got to be 100%. Um, you know, he can't put tape on it and some, you know, and play through it, I, I don't know. So, Royce Clayton, yeah, did I say Royce Clayton? I hope I didn't. Um, I meant, uh, but uh, yeah, that 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 team is just snake bit when it comes to injuries. I wait for Byron Buxton to go out. So, but. They, they seem to put, like, one player, add one player every year that just makes them leaps and bounds better. That team, that general manager knows how to work with the funds he has. Also and, helps that they play in a really bad division. I was about to say, and that division gives you leeway to not be have to be perfect. And that once you get in the playoffs, you know as well as I do, you just need a couple of pitchers and be – uh, in your hitting be at top notch at that time. I mean, that's Diamondbacks. Uh, as that's what they did last year. They scored without hitting home runs. Um, and, you know, it's that's what the Phillies need to learn how to do. Once the Phillies figure that out, where you can't, you, you're not going to be able to hit home runs every game, I, I think they'll be a lot it's better. It's really I, hard to win in baseball now. It's really fucking hard to win in baseball now. There's a lot of teams. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. The hum now with the replay reviews, if there's a bad call, like you can This can't is true, Mike. 
<laughs> like some teams yeah. in the past have benefited big time from some really egregious calls. There's just a yeah. lot. It's hard. Um, I, I just. That's why there's been no repeat back-to-back World Series winners in forever. I think the last yeah. one might have been the Yankees in the well, 90s. Yeah, and, it, you know, I think baseball is the hardest sport to repeat in. You know, I mean, look. Okay, I hate to pick on. I'm sorry if my man uh, uh, watches this uh, down in Atlanta. But, you know, look at the Braves in the 90s. They won all those, you know, division titles and whatnot but they only won one world series right so it's like that tells you how tough it is all right quad for royce lewis maybe back in mid-may ah sorry stuke I'm, that dude is literally, literally made a glass yeah he his daddy his mama must have been a glass blower so, <laughs> uh but yeah, so the Dodgers just won five to four. Up, oh, I'm sure Pepino's lighting up. Off of the Cardinals. Spark up, Pepino man. Spark up. So yeah, I'm not. Ah. Oh well. So now y'all have my undivided attention. But anyway, yeah, that. <laughs> And it's good for baseball, the Dodgers, to be good and relevant, too. That's another – I don't know if it's good for – I guess it is I, for eyes to have major teams. I just think for historical purposes, these some teams, it's not good for them to be perpetual losers. I mean, the Dodgers are not. Neither is the Yankees here. Today. It's not. It, we, we haven't gone quite back to the Yankees of, what, the 80s and early 90s yet. But, uh, you know. They haven't won in a while. They're There's always like, something. The cool thing about, I mean, last year there was a lot of cool historical things that happened. Like the Pirates had their largest comeback in franchise history. So thinking about that is pretty wild. All the teams that they have filled it over the years. I mean, just think Honus Wagner, Clemente. They don't own the record for that. It's the 2023 Pirates with O'Neill Cruz Jr. and Cabrian Hayes have the largest comeback in franchise history. That's pretty crazy. Right. I know the Braves did a record this year uh, already. They had the most hits and runs to start the season since like 1954 when Hank Aaron was debuting. So that, I mean, that's pretty wild. There's always some crazy stat statistic being thrown out there. Right. Well, that's baseball is a game of numbers. And that's, you know, somebody's asked me before, and I've gone over this, why they play so many games. I go, because it's a game of numbers. And it takes that many games for the numbers to come out, you know, where the cream and that you have the right teams in the right positions. You got to have stats. You have to build statistics. And it takes that many games. And, you know, I, and it's great to look at records like that. You're exactly right. It's uh, I, I think I even would, I could have watched some of the Reds in Nationals because I wanted to see that young Reds team, but I can't watch the Reds unless it's a nationally broadcast game. So, <laughs> yeah. So I'm sorry. I was reading what Mike uh, had had on there. Uh, I, I, hey, you had a cool uniform, Mike. If your team wore this hat, I this is one of my favorite hats. Uh, picked it up at uh, right across the street from the Hall of Fame from the actually, Mike, from the, the Mickey Mantle store right across the street from the uh, Hall of Fame. That's one of the best hat stores I've ever there. That's one of the best stores I've been into for baseball stuff, merch. Yeah, but I had a problem with that store when I went in there. When I went to the Baseball Hall of Fame, I went into the Mickey Mantle store, and I'm like, wait a minute, where's the six-packs at? How can this be the Mickey Mantle store and you don't sell (laughs) beer? Like, this is bullshit. This is a joke. Some pre-mixed drinks at the front, you know? Yeah. (laughs) How can you have baseball's most famous... (laughs) <laughs> baseball's most famous lush and you don't are not selling a six six pack of beer in here this is bullshit star 
Um, yeah, that, that's that's true. That's a good good insight. For, that's why I have Wesker Griff on these shows. Insights like that. That's that's funny. Uh, so yeah, that. The baseball first weekend, you know, some things did come up. You were talking about the Angels being the worst organization in baseball. I think the Rockies is the worst. That team has no – they're rudderless. They have no direction. No, I debated this with a couple of people at the National last year because we were talking about over the last couple of decades, over the last two decades, what is the worst – MLB franchise and it has to be the Angels because they've had two generational talents they've they've spent insane amounts of money on Josh Hamilton, Albert Pujols, CJ Wilson, they have spent dumb money stupidly. They and they haven't won nada. I think they get I think they overpaid for one of the Weaver brothers too, didn't they? Justin Upton, yeah, one of the Weaver brothers. So yeah. people can Rendon. bitch and moan about the athletics or the pirates, but the I Angels the are, are the Angels are easily the you biggest know, the joke franchise the in the last why I two don't decades. Talk about the pirates in Oakland like that is because those management groups know exactly what they're doing. Yeah, they want the collective revenue to right. line their Pittsburgh pockets. Pittsburgh wants to make money. That's that's it. They figure out what they need to spend, and they did pay for uh, what uh, Brian uh, Robertson, Brian the uh, outfielder, Brian Reynolds, Ryan Reynolds. But you know that's trade fodder for some season. But in that um, last decade, they've actually made the playoffs though, and they right. had. And they've actually had a decent farm system that has produced a lot of good players. Well, when you granted they have traded those picks. players and got rid of them, right? It's easy but to still. make good picks when you're every year you have a top five pick. <laughs> but still, they're not giving a hundred million to C.J. Wilson, right? Or or Albert Pujols when he was clearly over the hill. Yeah, couldn't walk. He he ran in bases in a circle because he can only go right because <laughs> uh, his left foot was so bad. But you know. I, I just I, I think the rock I, I said it last year. I I just think the Rockies, the outfield is probably one of the worst outfield fielding outfields last year I ever saw in my life. And I think this year's outfield is worse. So I, I, I like to watch the Diamondbacks. They have a couple of UVA players, they're fun to watch. So I've been watching them play a little bit this week, and it and they're in the time zone where you're they're between the East Coast and the West Coast games, so it, it fits in kind of good. Uh, so I usually have that game on watching, and uh, man, the Rockies are bad. <laughs> the Rockies, so, though, the Rockies have the same problem though that they've had since 1993. Nobody wants to pitch there. They can never get a good free agent pitcher to come to their to come there because nobody wants to pitch there. That's true. So you have to draft pitching. That's an easy fix, Ed. You have a top five draft pick every season. You think you can get one right. And that's what they did. And they had Yabaldo, who Yabaldo Jimenez, who was good for a couple years, and then he completely fell off. And you know, but, so when your your pitcher has an ERA of four point four, you have to think that's like a three point seven in other ballparks or three point whatever. It's not this. You have to score runs too, but you have to play defense. You can't give the other team extra outs, so you have to catch the ball when it's hit in the park, and they suck at it. I'm sorry, they are. Yes, back. they do. And I was telling Mike, I was telling Mike Eastern Connecticut sports cards, who, if people watching don't know this, he's a big Yankees fan. The Yankees yeah. have had this problem too. They can't get pitchers to come in free agency outside of Garrett Cole. They can't get pitchers to come to Yankee stadium to sign with them also because of the stadium, because you literally give up a pop-up and it's a home run in right field. Well, uh, Soto hit a laser in the left field, but yesterday, well, that was in Houston though. They oh, weren't playing was, in Yankee stadium. Yeah, I forgot about that. So one last question before we get out of here. How bad was the booing for the Braves announced in the opening game? Uh, it wasn't that bad, I don't think. I, I was watching like a highlight or something about Braves being announced. And, uh, 
Yeah, I, I think they were making it out more than it was. But they I always think. do that horse shit. The media they always make out like, oh, they're in Philadelphia. Oh, they're booing, dude. They boo harder in New York than they do in Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, here with this horse shit. All right, uh, but it was cool. I took I took Friday off to watch Mets opening day, even though they lost. My my big boss texted me and said, "If the Mets are gonna get whipped, why didn't you just come to work?" And I was like, "Well." A bad day of watching baseball is better than a good day of going to work. Um, So I watch multiple games, but it's always cool. I feel like a little kid again on that opening day when they call the players out to the line. I I really love that part of it. The first day of uh, singing the anthem and all that stuff. I I just, you know, get a little goosebumpy. and I'm right there with you. Yeah. It's literally like Christmas Day. Right, right. Opening day is like Christmas Day because every right. team's got a chance. Reese Hoskins for MVP. Oh, almost text you, Phillies guys, because Reese Hoskins, who's not known for his glove at first base, diving play behind the bag, line shot, ground ball, beautiful play. I was like, Reese Hoskins, gold glover. There you go. Uh, yesterday. No, today's game. So, the Easter uh, miracle, <laughs> hallelujah! <laughs> Any uh closing words on this Easter Sunday? And I hope everybody had a great one out there. If you uh if you celebrate it, uh, any closing words, Ed, before we take off? MLB definitely does need to do a better job, though, of making the game more accessible. Uh, something that we were talking about, the chat was talking about, they really it's frustrating that. Because I always tell people to watch the games and stay in too, but for some people, especially if you live in a in a in a smaller or a more cut off market, it is hard to try to watch the games. MLB does not make it easy, so it is frustrating, especially if you're a baseball fan or baseball card collector. If you got to go through all these loopholes and you got to really make a concerted effort to watch the game, it's it's hard when it's that difficult, and it shouldn't be that difficult especially in 2024 with all the technology that we have to make things accessible. So you want people to watch the games, especially baseball fans and people who collect cards and, and who are passionate about the sport. Cause I love watching baseball. It's the best sport. It's amazing. It's so much fun. I had so much fun this weekend watching all the games. It's just, I, I it's just fucking awesome. I love this time of the year. And you know, anybody who watched my channel knows I'm the same way, man. I just everything sucks. else is filler. Yeah, it sucks if like you're in an area where it's just like really difficult to do that. I, I feel bit, like I empathize with you because it's just they don't make it easy. Even not even me living in Philadelphia, having Comcast, being able to watch the Phillies game, and then I got. The MLB package to watch the extra games. Even I get blacked out at certain games. If a game's on Apple or Peacock, I can't watch it. That's that shouldn't be the case, especially when I'm paying that money to watch these games. So it is, it's annoying. Yeah, uh, I just want to say I don't know why I'm, I uh, I watched my feed through uh, my Streamyard, and for some reason I'm getting a big delay on y'all's uh, comments. Uh, sorry if I'm not hitting them right off. I just got a few. I, I peeked over to my account on YouTube. And uh, also just want to say, please hit the uh, one of the thumbs on the way in or out or while you're in there. You can gently tap it. You don't have to smack it. Just gently rub on it. Uh, yeah, Pafalzi, I know. I lived out there. Six teams. Yes, I understand. Uh, my, my closing, another great weekend. My Mets were 0-3. But you know what? Uh, I love love the sport. There is I, I watch it more than the Mets. I love watching the the players play. Uh, I love the way the game is played. Enthusiasm, uh, just so much fun. A lot of stories come out. Um, you know, others people love football because of the action. Um, you know. I don't like to watch chess either, but I know it's 
more to it than just sitting there and staring at pieces. <laughs> uh, I don't like playing checkers. <laughs> um, so I'm not trying to put anything down, but you ever I, been I, to a checkers? <laughs> I have been to a checkers. <laughs> I like a checkers. We had one in my hometown for a while. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I hashtag watch the games. I'm stealing that from Ed. Ed knows it. Hashtag Ed. It, uh, copyrighted uh i gotta pay him for it um or listen to the games you can put it off the radio yeah, on. yeah and if you can't i'm gonna not be like it if you watch highlights look at you know <laughs> whatever you're it that's okay too uh just be involved you know i i, I love to, to collect uh, i think most people that watch my channel are baseball collectors as well as other sports uh I, hey Mike, I agree. Um, I have T-Mobile, so I have I have the baseball package for free. Uh, thanks for the hearts. I just saw. Uh, I, I, you know, Mike. I don't know how old of a, a, a person you are. I'm, I'm 52, and to me, paying for baseball games when I first did it, then it just became, you know, people do it for the NFL package for decades and now i feel like the nfl package nfl's kind of ate themselves on that because they show so many games now um or i can just go to buffalo wild wings and watch the cowboys game if i really want to uh but baseball i, I don't live in the market so i i, I want to I, I get uh stressed out if i can't watch my mets um even when they suck uh but uh, that's all I got for this week. I hope everybody, again, had a, a pleasant Easter Sunday. I think it was nice and sunny for most people. Uh, some great games today to enjoy. Just kicking off the season. Uh, it's, it's a long one, but a fun one. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have some playoffs and other things going on and, and that are coming up uh, for, you know, basketball. You know, what a great – I'm not a basketball fan, but, man, with some great stories in both NCAA tournaments. Again, if the women don't take a great leap forward after this year in WNBA and college basketball, it's never going to happen. Um, I but, agree with you on that. Uh, you know, I, I think it's been just fun to watch. And uh, college softball has been pretty fun, too, to watch so far, so. Till next time, like, share, tell a friend, subscribe if you haven't. It doesn't cost you anything. And what we'll do on the next one, see ya. See ya.